On this episode of O'Fallon Matters, we'll find out how O'Fallon's Veterans Commission is lending a helping hand to our community. Discover the Renaud Center's friendly senior fitness classes. Then, learn how you can volunteer to help preserve O'Fallon's history. All this and more next on O'Fallon Matters. Welcome to O'Fallon Matters. I'm your host, Joe Richter. Our first story takes us for a spin into the world of vehicle maintenance. Check out how O'Fallon's fleet division keeps other city departments cruising. Imagine what our city operations would look like if police cars, dump trucks, and other vital equipment failed to operate. There would be no response to emergency calls. Potholes wouldn't get filled. Without O'Fallon's fleet division, the city wouldn't operate. Fleet maintains in excess of $20 million worth of vehicles, trailers, and equipment. Fleet is behind the scenes taking care of all the equipment that is breaking down, all the vehicles that break down during these important times when there's a snow event coming down. All these vehicles have to be on the streets. The citizens demand it, it will happen. And with that, we make sure that all these vehicles are up and running and going smooth and functioning safely. We all know the importance of the police department being able to react to any, uh, any police call that comes through. And ultimately, we understand that those vehicles have to be on the road, have to be moving, and get that police officer there safely and to uh, have that police officer be able to respond. The Fleet Division provides vehicle and equipment services of more than 575 vehicles, equipment, and trailers. They are a team of skilled professionals with degrees in automotive maintenance. The mechanics have strengths in different systems of vehicles, and as a team, they come together to ensure every vehicle and mechanic is a success. The mechanics I have do a fantastic job. I go home and I sleep at night, easily, knowing that the mechanics perform and what they put out is a stellar vehicle. That's one thing we pride ourselves on. Um, no kickbacks, and kickbacks are vehicles coming back for maintenance. So no kickbacks and to ensure that each and every vehicle that we put back out on the street is safe and ultimately effective. Very particular on how I take care of these vehicles for one thing, so it makes me probably a better fit than possibly sending it out to uh, one of these local shops. I know my hands were on it. I, I'm going to repair this thing like it was my own vehicle. And that makes me feel better about them driving them on the road as well. The job never stops for fleet. They conduct in excess of 48 preventative maintenance jobs a month. A PM will always turn into a corrective maintenance job. This doesn't include other modifications, upgrades, or recalls. O'Fallon's fleet mechanics perform maintenance better, faster, and cheaper and each mechanic can average somewhere between 300 and 500 work orders a year. These mechanics have a passion for solutions. One of the most things I like about the job is, aside from the people that we work with every day, is the satisfaction of seeing the finished product, you know. Seeing a, a parking lot full of cars that are broke down, cars, trucks, equipment, whatever it may be, getting them in the shop, repaired, and back out to the proper department. That's probably what I love the most, just the satisfaction of the completion. I come from a background working in a Ford dealership and it was just dealing with customers and now we're you know, working for the city. It's a totally different aspect, so it's cool knowing that you know, we're keeping the city going. I tend to like the more difficult repairs because it's, I like to figure things out, diagnose the problem and then repair it. And if it's even more complicated, uh, that drives me to you know, want to learn more about the vehicles. Ultimately, Fleet wants other divisions to understand that no is not an answer to their maintenance and modification needs. The answer is, how can we get it done and how can we support you? In simplest terms, 
We have a business plan. We actually act like a business. We treat it like a business. We want your business and we want to keep your business. So we believe in our customer service for these vehicles. We take care of every vehicle, every piece of equipment, and every tool that's out there. The elected official or resident doesn't notice fleet, then we are ultimately effective. Thanks for that story, Joe. Next on O'Fallon Matters, I had a chance to sit down with O'Fallon's Veterans Commission to learn more about their public outreach within the community. Here is that story. We are one of the best cities for veterans in the country that was voted by Military Times Magazine. A veteran in this community just needs to only ask for help and, and the resources are there. We have numerous veterans organizations in the city here. We have the VFW, the American Legion, the AMVETS, the Marine Corps League. Uh, any of those can help out with anything. All you gotta do is give them a call. The Veterans Commission, we started a little over 20 years ago. Our original mission was to monitor the affairs around the Veterans Memorial. The Commission at that time wanted to expand the role of the Commission to assist veterans in the community. One of the first things that we did was open our Veterans Affairs Office, which is here in, in City Hall. We felt that being able to provide more services to the veterans of the community would benefit not only the veterans of the community, but the community itself as well. Oh, we have a lot of friendly and great veterans uh, that helps out. We have a lot of great leadership here in the city. We have numerous veterans organizations that can get, uh, and everybody's on board with all the uh, ceremonies, with the parades. Uh, the whole city just gets into it. It's amazing. I haven't been around too many cities that celebrate veterans like Old Fallon does. It's amazing. It's Once you get here, You'll find out all the different organizations. The people are friendly, and anybody will do anything for you. You can always just make a phone call to any organization, to any veteran themselves, or you can even call the city hall, and they always direct you to the right veteran or to the right organization. Uh, through the holidays, we offer a lot of free meals, uh, housing. We can help out with just about anything. Um, all you gotta do is ask us, and somebody will step up here in the city of O'Fallon. Disabled veterans do get discounts for certain utilities. That was something that the commission uh, brought forth to the city council and they passed that. We have an HOA outreach program where uh, members of the commission go to the local HOA meetings where we can actually answer questions from the veterans of community, offer information, and veterans that need specific help to send them in the right direction. Most of these resources are, are being administered by veterans. And we are people who understand the plight, the problems, and the, the seriousness of the situations that the veterans of today are involved in. The city of O'Fallon supports its veterans unlike any other city that I've ever seen before. None of the accomplishments that we have achieved over these years would have been possible without the support of the mayor and the city council. Without that support, we just couldn't do any of it. They trust this commission to make the right decisions and make those suggestions and concerns to the council that would honestly benefit us being able to provide more and more services to the veterans of, of, of this community. To be a member of the Veterans Committee, you just go to volunteer services and, and put in an application. We will not turn somebody away. There's always something to do, someone to help the veterans of this community and their families to know that the city does have resources to help them and their families. And I don't know any other city that has that many avenues to, to follow or go through to get help for veterans. It's an amazing place to live for veterans, uh, let alone the jobs. There's plenty of jobs. There's uh, just about anything you can ask for for a veteran. We have it here in the city of O'Fallon. The O'Fallon Police Department just received a special designation for its ongoing commitment to public safety. Joe Meyer has more. <music>
Recently, O'Fallon's Police Department received an accreditation from the Missouri Police Chief's Charitable Foundation that will help the department continue serving and protecting our citizens now and into the future. O'Fallon is now the 58th city in the state of Missouri to receive certification through this foundation. And being about only 4% of police departments nationwide are accredited or certified through an organization such as this. What this does is it shows this monumental task that the O'Fallon Police Department is providing police services in the standards set forth by the 21st century policing standards. So on the 18th of August, I came out and met with the mayor, the city administrator, the chief of police, did an assessment on the record center, the jail, uh, an overall review of the, uh, the building itself. Um, I personally went through all 209 of the standards, and I will tell you that uh, standing here before you, I'm very impressed with the men and women of the O'Fallon, Missouri Police Department. The designation of being a certified law enforcement agency is a direct representation of the professionalism, contemporary policing practices, and quality of service our organization is providing to the community. Throughout the certification process, Missouri Police Chiefs Charitable Foundation has a standard, a list of standards that each department looking to achieve certification must meet. The department having certain standards, written policies, would open those policies uh, to the auditors that came in to look here at the department, and in doing so, would have to verify they are meeting the standards set forth um, by the best practices and by state law. And also, we would show proofs or samples um, of how we are achieving such things. So not only do we have these policies written down, we had to prove through auditing uh, police reports that have been written in our records, to training policies and procedures and such to show that not only do we talk about it, but we actually do what we talk. Everybody has been very cooperative. It was a learning experience. Um, you can imagine uh, somebody coming into your business and looking at all your files and procedures and then actually talking to uh, some of the staff as to how they do things and why. So through that process, a report was written. I shared that report with the, uh, with the mayor and the city administrator and the police chief. And it's been recommended that the city of O'Fallon receive accreditation through the Missouri Police Chiefs Charitable Association. Congratulations to the O'Fallon Police Department for achieving this important accreditation. If you would like more information on the O'Fallon Police Department accreditation process, please go to www.ofallon.mo.us slash pd. O'Fallon has a rich history, and that storied history is well preserved right here in our city. Find out how you can volunteer to preserve our history. Here in O'Fallon, you don't need a time machine to revisit our history. The O'Fallon Historical Society has an archive of photographs, documents, and other artifacts that will take you back through our city's heritage. Right now, our collection of over and above all the artifacts that we've, we've gathered uh, consists of somewhere between three and 4,000 images and somewhere around 600 documents pertaining to uh, the city, the fire department, and other organizations. Most of our images have been digitized, mostly because um, the originals are not part of our collection. People have loaned them to us and um, we've given them right back and that's worked beautifully. One of the things we're most proud of is the fact that all the artifacts and furnishings that are in the Log Cabin Museum are actually related to O'Fallon. They're from O'Fallon. They're not just a, a period piece from somewhere else. And so when you come into the Log Cabin, you are really seeing O'Fallon's history, all the way from the uh, bathtub that the uh, Sisters of the Most Precious Blood donated, uh, that they brought here from Switzerland, to um, hair dryers, to um, the band uniform that our first mayor wore when he organized um, the community band. So everything here is O'Fallon. The last 20 years, Pat has dedicated her time in collecting and preserving our city's history, but there is still more to be discovered. Our next step really is to uh, bring in people who are keeping the images and so forth from the 1960s on. I understand there's a really active Facebook community and that's great. Um, but we'd really love them to share those uh, images from, say, 1950 on, really, um, so that we can bring our collection up to date, make it more complete. 
The O'Fallon Historical Society is always looking for new members, and everyone is welcome to join. You know, people tell us that the society word is the wrong word to use. Sounds like a bunch of little old ladies having tea. Well, you know, we're, we're not quite there. But we would, would welcome younger members. Um, I know that most families now are, their schedules are kid-centric, and I understand that. But if they can uh, tell us how they'd like to participate or what kind of meetings they'd rather attend, do they just want to hear uh, lectures or see photo exhibits or whatever, we'd, we'd love to change ourselves to suit them. We're happy to do that. We just want to get more people involved and eventually, quite literally, hand the torch to them. I've been a member since 1999, uh, 20 plus years. Uh, started out basically just getting, enjo you know, enjoying the company of the of the residents here who had been here the generation previous. As I became involved with my wife, we've had great times here. We've had wonderful uh, uh, events out here in the park and Civic Park over the years, and a lot of enjoyment with people coming in and taking the tours and seeing the, the historical aspects of O'Fall. One thing that I wanted also to, to, to expand on is the importance of your family with their history. I'm a grandfather now, and that is vitally important for my, my children and my grandchildren to understand where they came from and the history of where they live. One thing back in 2006, which was a sesquicentennial, which was 150 years, I just had a young granddaughter. And I'm not going to see a bicentennial of the, of the city of O'Fallon, but my granddaughter will. My granddaughters are going to be here. I want them to be involved also. And I would like for other granddaughters and great-granddaughters to be involved, and grandsons to be involved with O'Fallon's history, because it's vitally important to keep those lines alive. To find out how to become a member or to share your personal history, contact the O'Fallon Historical Society via their website at O'FallonMoHistory.com. Let's check in with our city engineer and see what crews are doing to improve your commute on the south side of town. Over the years, the city of O'Fallon has experienced tremendous growth on the south side of I-64. There has been increased residential development, retail, and parks built. The city was contacted by a developer a number of years ago to develop that whole area south of 64 and north of Highway BP to build 600 residential homes and to plat out commercial lots. Along with that came a need to upgrade the infrastructure along Highway DD for all of that increased traffic. And now the City of O'Fallon has approved a road improvement project for Highway DD to accommodate increased traffic. The Highway DD project has cost sharing with MoDOT, grant funds from the St. Charles County Road Board and Payne Family Homes. This project will provide increased capacity and a new road network for future residential and commercial developments in the area of the new Streets of Caledonia development. The project will include signalizing the intersection that's right there at Caledonia Parkway that leads down to the soccer fields and the theater, as well as widening Highway DD to four lanes for the stretch that goes through the development. We will also be building a new intersection just south of Caledonia Parkway that will feed the residential developments on both sides of Highway DD. We're also doing some ramp improvements at the interchange to increase capacity for the motorists. If you would like more details on the Highway DD Road Improvement Project, please visit ofallon.mo.us. And stay tuned for future O'Fallon Matters episodes for updates on this project and other major infrastructure upgrades throughout the city. We're hoping to start construction in spring of 2021, and we're anticipating one year to complete the project. With all of the development that is occurring even right now, there's, there's a lot of construction traffic in that area. Uh, so certainly we would ask residents to just pay attention to all of the trucks coming in and out of the highway. When the project is under construction, it will be more restrictive as we reconstruct Highway DD. So there will be temporary pavement that's put down to allow the motorists to have room while they build the other sections. 
The Renaud Center is a great place for seniors to get fit. Watch this story and find out the many fitness options seniors have in the city of O'Fallon. The young at heart in our community love to be active and fit just as much as the rest of us do. The O'Fallon Parks and Recreation Department is just what our senior citizens need. The Renaud Center offers classes and programs that will get them moving and energized. It's a great place to get in shape. It's a great place to meet people who are like-minded. And having that companionship in class will keep you accountable to coming and getting that exercise that we so desperately need. There are so many classes to choose from at the center. Silver Sneakers Cardio Circuit, Senior Weights and Toning, Functional Flexibility, and more. There's even personal training. All of these classes offer great benefits in improving your health. It's gonna help strengthen your bones. It's gonna help sharpen your mental facilities. It's going to strengthen and tone your muscles. As we age, um, unless we are strength training, we're losing muscles every year. So doing the strength training classes ensures that we keep our muscle, um, muscle tone, which is good for fall prevention too. The cardio class is good just to keep the ticker ticking appropriately. The flexibility class helps us as we age get up and down from the floor, maintaining that flexibility. I love silver sneakers. I like it because it helps my balance, it helps me firm my body up, and it's fun. Uh, the music is great, and the instructor is just fabulous. She's, she makes exercise fun. It energizes our bodies, and, and it helps our social uh, get together motions in our minds and our bodies. We, it all works together to make us a complete person. Just makes you feel better. It uh, helps with balance, helps with strength, um, energy. Mm -hmm. So we, we like it. My husband and I actually both have been coming about five years now, I think. No matter what class you're interested in, you can be confident that each instructor has the training and experience to help you reach your goals. The instructors are nationally accredited with their certifications. They know their stuff. We're all gonna do everything within our powers to keep you safe while you're with us because that's our top priority. We want you to get strong, but we wanna keep you safe while you do that. The Parks and Recreation Department are taking great care to follow the proper COVID precautions to keep these programs running safely. We are um, keeping our facility as safe as we can during the COVID virus. The staff are wearing a mask, um, except for teaching classes, and it's nearby, so as we're mingling around, if I had to go out into a crowd, I'd, I'd put it back on. We're social distancing, keeping people six feet apart. With this COVID going on, we haven't been able to get out of the house, so we can come here and social distance and get our exercise in, which is good, because we've missed it, you know, while we haven't been able to. I love uh, the fact that we're social distancing, we're six feet apart, and our instructor's amazing. She's always high key, always up, funny, and we've got great music to work out to. There are other options for those who would rather participate from home. We do have some exercises online for people to look at on the Facebook page, um, on the Renal Center's Facebook page. So anybody that's, you know, their personal comfort level, if it's not, if they're not ready to come back to the facility, we do hope they're taking advantage of those online classes. When you do um, feel like you're ready to come back, we're here for you. I advise anybody that thinks they're getting too old, you're never too old. Okay, so I, I, I just want to inspire everybody to come and work out with us here at the Renaud Center or the O'Day Lodge, either one. They're terrific. Are you ready to get healthy and fit? Visit RenaudCenter.com for a list of classes and get started today. Thanks for joining us today. If you have a good story idea, let us know. Email us at O'FallonTV at O'Fallon.mo.us. We hope you have a safe and happy holiday. And remember to give back to your community because O'Fallon matters to us all.